So we're going to talk about mindset today. So I want to forewarn everybody, okay? All jokes aside, my only objective is to help. That is my only objective. So when I, I, I say that because I'm probably going to say some things today that's going to upset some of you. And it, it's not my goal to upset you. My goal is to try to help. And that means I may say, hey, these are some things that can help you with your mindset. These are some of the problems you might be having. And some of you might take some of this stuff personally because you think I'm going directly at you specifically. I'm not. I'm talking to the masses. But I'm only here to help. OK, so don't be don't be upset if I, I say something that might be a little too direct. OK, the second thing I wrote down before I, I get started on this today is. You know, there are going to there. I wrote down a lot of notes here. I got some pages and there's going to be a couple of times where I'm going to get very excited and very you know aggressive and passionate. And it's only because I truly believe that if you can't get what's right in here, you don't have a chance, not just in real estate, but in anything. And I just refuse to accept that when you live in Southern California, you can't get right up here. So there's going to be some times, and I'll explain a little bit more, but, but that's why I get so passionate about it because it, it kills people is what's up here. And we can't let that happen. So, so I wrote that down as well, just as a preface before we get started. And the third thing I wrote down here before we get started is I greatly appreciate all of you, not just for being here today, just in general. Because let me tell you something, it's hard to get people focused right now, let alone real estate agents. Okay. I know we have 196 agents for the company. I have a pretty good pulse on about, I don't know, 110, which means there's 86 agents in the company that I have no clue what's going on. So I appreciate those of you that are here and participating and doing the things to help you get better, whether you're already producing, whether you're a brand new agent, whether you're in a slump and you're trying to get going, it's the activity. So I appreciate all of you for being here. Okay, so let's jump into this. So we're talking about mindset today because last week when Tony Smith was here, the two big questions he got when he opened up for questions was time management and mindset. We talked about time management on Monday. Hopefully you got a couple things out of that. So today, today's all about mindset. If you have questions, comments, concerns, feel free to put it in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that. Unmute yourself if you can. If I'm in the middle of a rant, don't interrupt me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just, you know, you ever seen, for those of you that have been around a little bit, there was a movie in the, the seventies called animal house. Right. And there's Bluto and Bluto, Bluto goes, was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? And the guy goes, the Germans, he goes, forget it. He's rolling. Just let him go. All right. So sometimes you got to let me do that. Okay. That's just the way it goes. All right. So let's talk about mindset here. So mindset. First thing I wrote down here is a definition of mindset. It's a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines our behavior, our outlook on life, and our attitude. It's a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines our behavior, our outlook on life, and our attitude. The first thing I wrote down here that's of serious importance for you to write down is your mindset is the most important trait to building a successful business. Your mindset is the most important trait to building a successful business. It's the foundation. It's more important than knowing the scripts. It's more important than prospecting. It's more important than previewing. It's more important than anything is your mindset. That's the foundation to building a successful business. Okay. And sometimes our mindset is almost as difficult to control as our ability to use our skills every day. See, sometimes we have that difficulty of using our skills every day. Our mindset is sometimes just as difficult to control. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Okay. There are many people that you'll hear, that you'll be surrounded with. And some of you are doing the same thing, that have a story, 
have an excuse. It seems like everybody has a very strong reason for why they can't control themselves mentally, and therefore they don't do what they're supposed to do each day. That's the definition of a mindset issue, is when you have an excuse, you have a story, you have a strong reason of why you can't control yourself mentally, and therefore you can't do what you're supposed to do every day at the level you're supposed to do. So the next note I wrote down here, write this down. If your goal is to be a lot more productive today than you've been in the past, if your goal is to be a lot more productive today than you've been in the past, and build your business to the highest level possible, you have to take control of what goes on in your head. If your goal is to be a lot more productive today than you've been in the past and build your business to the highest level possible, you have to take control of what goes on in your head. And until you do that, you're not going to be able to use the skills you've learned to the degree you could. You could practice 8 a.m. every morning. You could send in listing presentation role plays. You could do all these things until you're blue in the face, as they say. But until you can control what goes on inside your head, you can't use your skills to the degree you could. I wrote down here, I wrote down here, there's two different ideas. I can and I will, or I can't and I won't. I can or I will, or I can't and I won't. You need to be on the I can and I will, not the I can't or I won't. This is the basic foundation of mindset. And last note I put down here on the basic foundation is you become what you think about most of the time. Now, as Mike Ferry would say, you don't become what you think about all the time. Otherwise, all the men would be women. OK, but, you know, that's a different story altogether. <laughs> OK, but you become what you think about most of the time. OK, the basic foundation of mindset. So. Now that we have the basic foundation of mindset, how do we go about strengthening the mindset? So I have pages of information here that we're going to talk about. So the very first thing I wrote down are goals. Goals. Underneath goals, I wrote down, you have to rewrite your goals every year, maybe even every six months. For some of you, maybe even every quarter. You have to rewrite your goals every year, maybe even every six months, and maybe even every quarter. You need to have 10-year goals, five-year goals, one-year goals. You need to have personal goals and you need to have business goals. Because I wrote this down. If you don't have any goals, you'll never be able to strengthen your mindset to the level it needs to be strengthened. But if you have goals and have something to shoot for and have a focus, have a target, you can rewire your mindset to focus on what's possible. But if you don't write your goals, you don't know what's possible. You don't know what you're shooting at. You don't know what you're aiming for. Therefore, your mind is allowed to wander. And in most people's lives, present company included, if you allow the mind to wander, will it go towards the negative or the positive? It'll go more towards the negative. So you have to not allow the mind to wander. Having goals will do that. I wrote this down here. You need to read your goals daily, three times a day. To strengthen your mind and protect your mindset, read your goals three times a day. What I would suggest, and it's open to you, what I would suggest is the first time you read your goals is as soon as you wake up in the morning. As soon as you wake up in the morning, read your goals. Why? Has anyone ever had a hard time waking up in the morning when the alarm goes off? Uh, anyone, you wake up and it's still dark outside and you go, oh God, I really don't want to go do this today. Right? Happen to see some of you going, yeah, 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 nod on your head, okay. So have your goals on your nightstand. So when the alarm goes off, the idea should be you hit, you hit the alarm, you read your goals, and it should excite you to say, let's go. Let's go get it today. Because your mindset starts the moment you wake up. 
And if the first thing you do when you wake up is start letting that negativity sink in, oh, I'm so tired. Oh God, I really don't want to go to work today. Oh God, I got to do this. Your mindset's a wreck and you've been up for 30 seconds. But if you have your goals right here, it's like, let's go. Time to get up, get ready, grab my coffee, grab my breakfast, get my shower, get my workout on, whatever your morning routine is. It's go time. I know what I'm trying to accomplish and I'm gonna go get it. Now, here's the thing. If you don't get as excited as I just announced, when you read your goals, you need new goals. Give you an example. If your nightstand, you have your goals and your alarm clock goes off and you look at it and it says, first class trip to Italy for me and the family. And you go, you know, there's a great Italian restaurant right down the street. I'm sure the kids are going to be just fine over there. And you go back to sleep, you need new goals. Okay. The Italy trip clearly is not the motivating factor. Okay. And we'll talk more. We can always talk more about goals, but read it right when you get up. The second time I would read your goals is right before you begin prospecting. Okay, because other than the money aspect of it, just the prospecting in general, is prospecting fun? No, no, it's not fun. Nobody goes, hey, you can do anything you want to do today. You want to go to the beach? No. Want to go, uh, want to go, uh, you know, fly in a helicopter? No. Nah. Want to go hiking? No. Nah. You know what I really want to do? I want to get told no 30 times. That's. That's what really gets me going. Nobody says that, but you do it because that's where the money is. But to get your mind right, right before you begin prospecting, look at your goals again to say, hey, this is why I'm about to make this phone call. This is why I have a smile on my face. This is why when they tell me, no, I'm going to go, that's okay. I'm going to the next. Read your goals right before you begin prospecting. Protect that mindset right from the first call. And then the third time I would read my goals would be after lunch. Anyone here ever have a hard time getting back to work after lunch with a high level of excitement? Because you go so hard in the morning, right? And that's because we want to. We roll eight o'clock, right? I'm posting scripts in the chat box. All right, we're going to breakout rooms. We're doing rapid fire at 8.30. We're just throwing things at you. Nine o'clock, I'm a great salesperson. I'm a great salesperson. I'm a great salesperson prospecting 12 15 you got me or neil yelling at you okay so you're like it's so hardcore in the morning that by one or two o'clock you're like whoo whoo but remember you have the whole afternoon to go get business so after lunch read your goals again to say i still got the afternoon let's go get it your mindset is something you have to work on daily and you have to work on it multiple times a day. If you just work on your mindset in the morning with affirmations or reading your goals, you're giving yourself too much negativity between now and the end of the day. It's just not going to work. Read your goals three times a day. Remind yourself of why you're doing this. Okay. And again, the personal and business goals. Because if you don't connect the two, then you're not, you don't know what you're doing this for. Okay. I wrote down here under goals. It's important to have an honest conversation with your family about where you want to take your business. It's important to have an honest conversation with your family about where you want to take your business. Because if your family is not on board with your goals and what you're doing every day in real estate, is that going to affect your mindset? 100%. If your spouse is not okay with you prospecting from nine to 12 uninterrupted, that's going to affect your mindset. If your kids are tugging at you all day long and you're not getting the work done that you need to get done, it's going to affect your mindset. You need to have an honest conversation with them about where you want to take your business. Have a weekly conversation with them about the tasks and goals you have for that week. If you do that weekly, your yearly goal will be complete will be easier to complete, I'm sorry. But if you just give them a yearly goal, hey, here's my plan. So for the next you know, 12 months, Monday through Friday, don't bother me during this time. They're not gonna remember. Weekly, okay? Okay, weekly. The family has to know, the kids have to know. I wrote down one of the things you can do with that is give them a reward. Here's an example, here's an example, right? 
You could tell your kids if they're they're small. I guess even if they're even if they're bigger kids, everybody likes ice cream, right? You tell your kids, hey, look, from nine to twelve, or whatever your prospecting hours are. I'm using nine to twelve as an example. You do what's best for you. Nine to twelve, Monday through Friday, I have to prospect uninterrupted. If you leave me alone from nine to twelve, all five days, Saturday, two scoops of ice cream. Okay, we'll go to Cold Stone, get the whole thing, right? Like it, love it, got to have it, and get them all, right? Give them some sort of reward. You know, you could tell your spouse, hey, look, if you let me do this, Saturday, you pick the dinner place. We'll go where you want to go. And I know for some of you, that's not exciting, okay? Some of you, you know, you're, you're thinking about where your spouse likes to go to dinner, and you're going, oh, shit, <laughs> I don't want to go there. But give them something, right, to protect your mindset. I wrote that down under goals. The next thing I wrote down, the next category I wrote down to strengthen your mindset is opportunity. Opportunity. Hey, Robert, your wife is listening to this recording? <laughs> Abs hey, she, she's, let me tell you something. We go wherever she wants to go, whether, no matter what the situation is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no matter what. Whether, whether it went right or not wrong, it doesn't matter, right? We're going there, man. I'm not smart, but I'm not stupid either. All right, so there you go. There you go. All right, I wrote down here opportunity. Opportunity. To protect your mindset, you have to focus on the opportunity that's at hand. Now, when I talk about opportunity, okay, the first thing I write down here in opportunity, this is really where you have to expand the mind. Part of strengthening your mindset is expanding the mind. And I want you to think about something. Get away from real estate for a second, okay? Let's, let's get away from real estate for a second. You live in Southern California. You live LA, Orange, San Bernardino, Riverside County, San Diego County, okay? Ventura County, most of you are where you're at. You live in the United States of America, problems, no doubt, but you live in a place where people are willing to die to get here. They're willing to put their lives on the line, not just to get to America, but to get to Los Angeles, to get to Orange County, to get to Southern California. You live in a place where people are willing to hide in caves, avoid gunfire, pay people off with their life savings, leave family behind so they can maybe try to get here. They're willing to do all these things to get to where you are today. That is an opportunity that you have in front of you is you live in the place that people are willing to die to get to. Don't forget that opportunity. Don't forget in your mind the importance of that thought and the opportunity that you have in front of you. So whenever you think, oh gosh, this is, it's too expensive to live here. The traffic is too bad. Okay, great. Trade places with the guy that's hiding in the cave right now trying to get here. Because they would gladly pay whatever it takes to get here. They would gladly sit in traffic. They would gladly deal with the smog and the population and all those other different things. You have an opportunity here that people are willing to die. That is a mindset alone will help you get through those negative times when it's tough. Because let me tell you something, in Southern California, as great as it is, it can be tough because it is expensive. And there are people and there is traffic and it can be that. But damn it, don't you lose fact, don't you lose mind of the fact that people are willing to die to get to your position, to have the opportunity that you have right now. And they're not even trying to come here. Not all of them are trying to come here to be real estate agents. They're coming here to build homes, dig ditches, they just want to be here. You're not only here, but you have an opportunity to have a real estate license to go make a fortune. Don't lose sight of that opportunity, if nothing else, when protecting your mindset. People are willing to die to get here. Thank you. I wrote for down here. 
wrote down here, stop focusing on opportunity. Stop focusing on what you don't like, what you can't do, and the issues that keep you unproductive. Stop focusing on what you don't like, what you can't do, and the issues that keep you unproductive. Because in our business, there's all kinds of other things that you can do, that can keep you productive, that can keep you focused, that can keep you going. Well, I don't like to door knock. Okay, don't do that. Call on the phone. I don't like to call on the phone. Okay, great. Don't do that. Go door knock. I don't like to do either one. Okay, don't do that. Go do a social media campaign. I don't like to do that either. Okay, put a bunch of big money on mailing campaigns. I don't like to do that either. Okay, go to the gym and make friends. Okay, stop focusing on what you don't like and go focus on the things that you can do, that you will do, not the issues that keep you unproductive. Well, it's too hard to get buyers into properties right now. Yeah, it is. Okay, go. what are you going to do to go find a listing? Or yeah, it is hard to get a buyer into property. So what do you do? Just quit? Or do you keep submitting offers? You keep trying. Somebody's going to get into escrow. Yeah, it's hard, no doubt. But don't focus on the things you can't do, that you don't like, the issues. That's affecting your mindset because there's too many opportunities. I heard Josie say today on open mic that last month was the most closings ever in Orange County. Ever. Yeah, it's hard. It's freaking hard out there. And I feel for you because it's hard, but there's deals closing. So yeah, that buyer, it's hard to get an escrow. Keep fighting for them. Don't just say, oh, I can't do it. It's too hard. No, keep fighting for them. Figure it out. And then in the meantime, try to figure out how to get another listing. Okay. I wrote down here an opportunity. Remove the retreat options. Remove the retreat options. As Tony Robbins would say, burn the ships. Right? If you want to take over the island, burn the ships. The opportunity in front of you, the only way to take on the opportunity you have in front of you in Orange County that we talked about, or LA County or San Bernardino Riverside County and all the different opportunities that you have here, the people that are trying to get here and you have the opportunity, the only way to accomplish that is you have to go 100% in. If you're one foot in, one foot out, you have no chance. And that's where the mindset affects is because some of you, your mindset's not right because you kind of have one foot out. So you're already leaning negativity. Help your mindset by going all in. If you tell your mind, we're going all in, we're burning the ships, we're going to go take over this island, your mind will automatically say, then damn it, we're, we're full steam ahead. We're going to figure out how to do this. Because if we don't, we lose. And we lose the war. By giving yourself an out, you're giving your mind the opportunity to think negative and say, run away. Don't do that. 100% in. Burn the ships. I wrote down here under opportunity, okay, help your mindset. I truly believe this is something that I've, I, I've said before. In my opinion, I'm not a spiritual man by any stretch of the imagination, okay, because there were some things in the past that kind of prevent me from doing that. Anyways, different conversation, all right, but I truly believe that it's everyone's birthright to be a millionaire. It is everyone's birthright to be a millionaire. Now, some people get it immediately. Some people are born millionaires. I wasn't, okay? I was born very happy, have great family, great parents, but some people are born millionaires. Some people get it through luck. Some people have to work for it. Majority of people get it through working for it, but it's your birthright to be a millionaire. The reason there's so many multimillionaires is because there's so many people that gave up their million because they didn't want to put in the work. They didn't want to put in the effort. They didn't want to seize the opportunity. They didn't want to fight for it. They just let that negative mindset take over. I can't do it. I won't do it. All these other different things. And their birthright of being a millionaire was taken from them. And then that million was given to someone else that became a multimillionaire. That's where multimillionaires are born from, is they take other people's millions who don't want. Don't tell me you can't be a millionaire. It was your birthright to be one. You have to set your mind right that it's you deserve to be a millionaire. You deserve to have a million dollars. You deserve that. And the only reason you're not there is because you're not convincing yourself that it's yours. And while you're doing that, people 
like me are trying to take it from you. People like Mike are trying to take it from you. People like Steve, jo or not Steve Jobs, Bill Gates is trying to take your millions. All you have to do is understand that you were given a million dollars as your birthright. Don't give it up. But part of the problem with our mindset is we think I can't be a millionaire. Bullshit. You were born with that right. Don't let somebody take your million. It was your right to do it. Okay. I truly believe that 100%. I wrote down here on strengthening the mindset. The next thing I put down here, staying positive. Staying positive. So how do you stay positive? I wrote down a few different ideas here. I wrote down, keep a wins journal. Keep a wins journal. Create a highlight reel of all the good things you do and revert back to that on the bad days. Every time you get a win, even if it's really small, track it in a journal and look at that anytime you get down as a reminder that good things are possible. Because we all get little wins. We think we don't. But a little win could be, I got a lead today. That lead didn't turn to anything, but you know what? I got a lead today. I set an appointment today. I was scared to death to call for sale by owners and I called one today and I hung up as soon as they picked up the phone, but I called them, okay? That's a little win. I learned, I, you know what? Robert keeps telling me, don't call expireds. And I tell you that because you don't know the scripts, some of you, most of you. So I took on his challenge and I said, I'm gonna know these scripts inside and out, upside down, left, down, right, left, down, right, in three different languages. That's really impressive, okay? I can only role play with you in one. But make those small wins. I showed up at 8 a.m. every day, five days a week. I did open mic for the first time ever, scared to death, but I did it. Little wins to keep you on track, to let you know that it's possible. I wrote down here, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can always start where you are and change the end. Part of staying positive. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can always start where you are and change the end. So examples of, again, setting an appointment, went on an appointment, scheduled a face-to-face -face meeting, got a lead, got a referral, showed a property, received a compliment. Any of those types of things. Keep a little journal on that. Small wins add up to big wins. I wrote down here, stop seeing the losses and see the wins. If all you see is, well, another no, another no, another no, another no, you're never going to get over it. Write down the wins. The wins are the important ones, not the losses. I wrote down here on staying positive multiple times per day, read or watch positive stuff. Fill your mind constantly with positive things. See, this is part of the, the hardest part of coaching is that I only get you for a short amount of time per week. Mike Ferry taught me this years ago. He said, coaching calls, let's say a coaching call and everything is 30 minutes, right? Well, <clears throat> if they work 40 hours a week, you only get them for 1 80th of their week. What are they doing the rest of the time? Because I try to be pretty encouraging. I try to be pretty positive. I am probably, myself and Neil, are your biggest cheerleaders in the world. Now, sometimes we can be harsh and sometimes you don't think I'm a cheerleader because <laughs> sometimes you think I'm mean, okay? I'm only mean sometimes because I'm trying to help. Remember at the beginning, I'm only trying to help, right? And I want you to know, if you ever think I'm mean, it's only because I care because if I don't talk to you, that's when you know I don't care. When you don't hear from me is when you know I've pretty much given up on you. And trust me, there are people that are in that category in our company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't feel bad about that. Okay. That's just part of the gig. Right. So, but you have to constantly fill yourself with positive information. Go to YouTube, watch motivational videos, Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, TD Jakes, Eric Thomas. Okay. Whatever the case may be. If you're a fan of comedy, I love comedy. Right. So sometimes watch a short clip of a stand up, a movie, something that keeps you smiling, keeps you laughing multiple times a day. Read or watch positive stuff. Take a five minute mental break to do that. OK, I wrote down here, read books on successful people. 
You know what you'll find when you read books on successful people that almost all of them struggled at first, but they kept pushing. You know, McDonald's, Ray Kroc, the guy who owns McDonald's, he didn't start McDonald's until he was 52. Okay. Colonel Sanders didn't open a KFC until he was 62. A lot of these people struggle at first, but they keep pushing. Could you imagine if the Beatles, who were rejected by five recording companies, the Beatles, yes, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Ringo, those Beatles were rejected by five recording studios. But their mindset was so strong, they knew they had something, so they kept pushing. The sixth one said, all right, we'll give you a shot. That worked out okay. Not everybody succeeds at first. You have to keep going. Read books on successful people. Okay. I wrote down here, staying positive, mastermind with other agents to receive feedback and go through your struggles and successes together. I think that you'll find that some agents are not making life as easy as you think they are. Sometimes we think some of these people that we mastermind with or we bring on, they're like, oh my gosh, they never have any problems. Okay, <laughs> mastermind with some of them and see what happens. I talked to some of these people that we've brought in for interviews and um, on a weekly basis. And sometimes they'll be like, hey, how do you handle this? Or what is your company doing to do this? Hey, you got the agents that are doing this. Some of them have the same problems. Okay, but mastermind with people, go through your wins together, go through your successes together. I wrote down here on staying positive, stressing over the small stuff kills your mindset. Stressing over the small stuff kills your mindset. Focus on the big stuff. The little things that we stress over, okay? They kill our mindset. There's that old saying, don't worry about the little thing. Boy, I tell you, you want to stay positive. You want to protect your mindset. Don't stress over minor stuff. Sometimes we're a day delayed on something. And for some of you, you turn that into the biggest deal in the world. You're, and, and I'll ask you on coaching calls. Wait, so is this deal going to cancel? Or it's going to close. Well, it's going to close. It's going to be a day later. Okay. It's a day later. Who cares? Stressing out over small stuff kills your mindset. Don't do that to yourself. I wrote down here on staying positive, you are, you are putting in hard work and time. You all are putting in hard work and time. Reward yourself along the way because you deserve some rewards. Reward yourself. Now you may think, well, what am I rewarding myself for? Or I don't have any money to reward myself. Reward yourself with something. Reward yourself, whatever it may be, okay? Go to a spa for the day. Go relax for a day. Go golfing. Go buy yourself some new clothes. Okay? Take some time away. You go get ice cream. Some of you, maybe not ice cream, maybe something a little stronger, but that's okay. Okay? Whatever the case may be, you have to reward yourself. If you don't reward yourself, then what the hell are you doing this for? Just getting up to take a beating every day? You have to reward yourself. Sometimes we kill our mindset because we just go through the grind every day and there's no reward. There's no fun. There's no excitement. Give yourself a reward. Pat yourself on the back. You did a good job. You're putting in the work, the time, the effort. You are in an industry where 50% of people don't close a deal. Ever. 80% close less than three a year. The fact that you're here, you should reward yourself because where's everybody else? We had an agent just join our company recently. And I said, I said why, why are you joining the company? You care about coaching? No. All right. You want help with digital stuff? No. Why do you join our, why'd you join our company? Well, because you guys are just present and do training every day. My company hasn't done training in forever. They don't care about me or Neil or all the great coaching stuff. They just love the fact that we're here. And you're here. Give yourself a reward. Pat yourself on the back. If you don't do that, you're killing yourself mentally. Don't do that to yourself. 
I wrote down here, this is the most important thing probably about your mindset. The most important point about mindset, who you surround yourself with matters. Who you surround yourself with matters. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay. Now we can be here and you could say, well, I surround myself with master's agents. Yeah. For a few hours a day. What about the rest of the day? Even if you're only surrounded with us for eight hours a day, there's 24 hours in a day. What about the rest of the day? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Are you surrounding yourself with positive people? Or are you surrounding yourself with people that bring you down? Are you surrounding yourself with people that also have poor mindsets that are also giving up their millions? Because remember, the people you surround yourself with also have a right to be a millionaire. How many of them are? How many of them are working towards it? If none of them are working towards that million dollars, they're giving their million dollars away the same as you. Who you surround yourself with matters. Nobody has a right to tell you what you can and cannot do, not even me, not Neil, not Mike, not nobody. And so if you're surrounding yourself with people that tell you what you can and cannot do, find new people. It's not hard. I've been told there's apps. Okay. <laughs> I've been told there's things that you can do to find new people. Okay. But if you're not surrounding yourself with people, if the people around you are not making you better, they're not pushing you, they're not challenging you, they're not encouraging you, then find new people. I don't care if they're your family. Well, the biggest problem I have, my brother's negative. Get rid of him. Well, he's my brother. So Let me tell you something. I've shared this, but I've shared this with you before, and this is 100% true. My brother and sister were not invited to my wedding. That's a fact. Because I can't, I can't take it. It's your brother and sister. So what about your cousins? Nope. I was 12 years old, 12 years old, driving home from San Diego with my parents, went to some family's house. I told my mom, dad, I said, I'm never going to another family event again. People are too negative. My dad, God bless his heart, said, no problem. I haven't seen some of my aunts, uncles, cousins in 30 years. And I'm better for it. Instead, I created my own group of people that want to win, that want to succeed, that want to build, that want to do more. Find those people. Stop being tore down because you think you have to be connected to these people. Bogus. Now, if it's a kid, eh, you're on your own, okay? Don't go home and tell your eight-year-old, hey, it's been real, but, you know, the, this is just too much, okay? Robert told me I got to get rid of the negativity, and yeah, you're just a bit much for me right now. <laughs> okay, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I don't want anyone's spouse is calling me tomorrow either. Oh, yeah, my husband came home yesterday. You won't believe what he said. Jeez. Okay, don't do that. But who you surround yourself with matters. If you're the smartest and richest person in your friends group, you need new friends. Now, luckily for me, I will never be the smartest. That one's easy for me. Okay, okay. I have succeeded in not being smart. So I'm always gonna be okay there. But luckily I'm also not the richest, but I'm working towards it. But who you surround yourself with matters. Don't let anyone take away your money. Don't let anyone take away your dreams, your hopes, your goals. No way. And if anyone tries to do that, if anyone tries to bring you down, you say, hey, my coach at Century 21, Robert, he told me you can go bleep and I'm going to go get my money. Don't let anyone take that away from you. No way. No how. Absolutely not. You deserve better than that. You deserve better than that. I wrote down here on strengthening your mindset, last couple of points here, because I know we got to go, but I got all kinds of stuff. I wrote down here on strengthening my mindset. It's a never ending process of developing and strengthening your mindset. It's never ending. You may have the strongest mindset in the world today. Tomorrow, you still have to develop and strengthen your mindset. A week from now, you still have to develop and strengthen your mindset. It's a never ending process. It's a never ending process. 
And I wrote down here, strengthening your skills and your knowledge will strengthen your mindset. Strengthening your skills and your knowledge will strengthen your mindset because confidence affects mindset. Strengthening your skills and knowledge will strengthen your mindset. Confidence affects the mindset. And this right here might be one of the biggest points for a lot of you. Spend less time comparing yourself to others. Spend less time comparing yourself to others and what they are doing. Spend less time comparing yourself to others and what they're doing and more time improving yourself and working to attain what is in your business plan. Spend less time comparing yourself to others and what they are doing and more time improving yourself and working to attain what is in your business plan. You cannot become them and they cannot become you. It's not about them or what they do. It's about you and accomplishing the goals in your business plan. Because your business plan is going to be different. Where you're at in life is different from there. What they do is different. Stop comparing yourself to them. You create your business plan and do whatever you have to do to accomplish what's in your business plan. Because success is not how you compare to others. It's how you compare to yourself. Not every successful person is a multimillionaire. Not every successful person is a billionaire. Some people's definition of success is different. Success is based on how you compare to the best of yourself. And if you compare yourself to others, you're always going to have a hard time being successful in your mind because there's always going to be somebody smarter, somebody richer, somebody better looking, somebody faster, whatever the case may be. Compare yourself to the best ability. And if you reach that, then you're successful. And that will protect your mindset. One o'clock on the dot. Look at that. Holy cow. Unbelievable. All right. That's all I got, folks. Thank you so much. Hopefully there was one or two things there that were helpful for you in terms of your mindset. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, You're welcome. fire. You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. you so much. Remember, that's the most important thing. So I know I get a little intense and a little bit passionate about it, but it's that important. Okay. Thank it's you, Robert. Important. You got me through at least one more day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. That's a mic drop for me. All right. Good job. Good job. You all are the best. I really do appreciate all you being here and all the work that you're putting in. It, it makes all the difference in the world. Thanks, all right. Robert. Well, well, look, let's get back at it. We got our, let me stop this.